First of all, I was one of the um, parliamentary delegation to uh, Paris this year. To say very quickly, we did have, as, as well as 51 nations, uh, 100,000 people at the rally. Extraordinary. <clears throat> and 600 political dignitaries, members of parliaments throughout the world. That is just extraordinary in any event. And finally, um, we presented at that event David M. Amos MP and myself for the Lords, uh, colleagues here, um, together about uh, just short of or just over 500 parliamentarians who committed uh, to a statement supporting what is happening at Ben Rajavi and in Camp Liberty in Camp Ashraf. Today we know that the Iranian resistance movement is led by, is led by a woman, Madame Rajavi. Women form more than 50% of the NCRI members and play a key role in carrying out the most serious responsibilities of this movement. And women political prisoners have re resisted making unbelievable sacrifices. But what is the role of the international community in this? Is it to become accustomed to the terrible human rights violations and respond to its conscience just by adopting an annual resolution only to verbally condemn the horrible and uh, most inhuman acts of this regime? Or is it to speak out and call for immediate justice? The Security Council must make give special attention to the massacre of the prisoners in 1988, a crime which has not received any punishment yet. I also add my voice to those who have protested against the UN Secretary-General's untrue report of the situation in Camp Liberty. This is of great concern to all of us. They are dissidents. They've got supposed to have UN, UN protection. We have to do something about those people who are suffering, and they ought to be transferred back to Ashraf before they, they can, uh, and, and not so that they can uh, be, be continue to suffer in in, in Camp Liberty. I mean, what on earth do the Iraqi government think it's doing? Of course, it's it, cap in hand to the Iranian government as far as that government is concerned. And we really do have to ensure that more pressure is put upon our government because that's the sort of thing that we can do in our... I house. have been appalled. I have been absolutely appalled by the reports of the activities of the United, State, United Nations Special Representative, the Secretary General, and what is said to have happened in, in Camp Ashraf and, and generally. I have been absolutely appalled by this, and I cannot understand that the United Nations, and Iran was one of the founding members of the United Nations, that the United Nations is not conducting an investigation, and it's very clear that there's an absolute need for such an investigation. Above all, I think the United Nations re recently recognized that it has a responsibility to protect. What's happening in Iran, in Iran is truly, truly shocking. The evidence of the violation of human rights um, has, to, has to shock anybody that sees that. But alongside that shocking, um, appalling violation of human rights, I think also there's much to give hope in the sense of the resistance that is being shown, particularly among women, and the indomitability of the human spirit and the resilience of human dignity, which is at the heart of human rights, and that that is not being beaten. Um, they can rain down missiles, but they cannot crush the human spirit. Uh, and that uh, is very humbling <coughs> for those of us who are not having to live through what people of Iran uh, are living through. Exactly on the day of this so-called election, the sham elections on, in Iran, some 40 missiles were attacked at liberty, a prison-like camp half a square kilometer with some 3,100. Up to now, as a result of the three missile attack, 10 people have, have died. Over 170 <coughs> have been severely wounded. It's time for the UK, the European Union, the United Nations to act and to take those people back to Ashraf.